ಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ ಗೋಳ್ ಬ್ರಜಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಸೊ ಅಫಿಷಿಯಲಿ we're but in our area of the world today begins the purushottam math mass and uh i think in other places it started yesterday so today for the next one month um the uh previous month will take a break and continue after one month and that means the chaturmasya stops for a month and there's no holidays in this month and so this will go on from the 18th of September to the 17th of August, uh, October uh a little bit about purushottam math month and uh and there's a lot there's a little known about this today we'll speak a little bit about it and tomorrow we'll go into a little bit more deeper um lord krishna is purushottam and so this is the lord's favorite month uh yes krishna is the supreme among all the incarnations of himself so purushottam is the supreme among all months it is the holiest month superior to the pious months of magh vaisakha and even kartik which comes up so it's even superior purushottam math is worshiped all over the universe by devotees sages demigods and even lakshmi devi herself why is it called the ari arika month or extra month it's an extra month because of the lunar it's a lunar part of the lunar calendar vedic calendar is lunar calendar and is based on the cycles of the moon and because shri krishna has all his potency mercies blessings are found in this month it's all called also called malamas polluted month so it's interesting although it's purushottam mas it's also called the polluted month malamas because the performers of kan, karma kanda cannot get any fruit of results from their worship during this month so when if you do rituals or pujas or anything like that forget it so only devotion to krishna bhakti works in this month of purushottam uh we'll read something from uh, skanda purana and padma it this month has the power to bless its performer one who follows this month destroys all past sinful reactions one who does not perform the vrata this month cannot reach pure devotional service <laughs> the value of purushottam month is far more valuable than all other austerities and religious activities mentioned in the vedas anyone who observes this month will return to goloka vrindavan at the end of his life ravasa muni just by bathing in the holy river during purushottam month one becomes sinless the glory of all other months is not equal to 1/16th of the glory of this month purushottam by bathing in holy places giving in charity and chanting the holy names of krishna during purushottam month all miseries are destroyed 
one attains all kinds of perfections and fulfills all his desires. Now, Mickey Mooney says, oh, before I read that, uh, Purushottam Vrata equals 1,000 Kartik Vratas. So we know Kartik is the holiest month every year. Purushottam is a thousand times greater. By observing Purushottam Vrata, one attains more benefit than performing 100 uh, Asva made his sacrifices, horse sacrifices. All the holy places live, live in the body of the month of Purushottam. Anyone who faithfully performs Purushottam Vrata will go to Goloka Vrindavan. Any residents, those who reside in a holy dam during Purushottam month, they get a thousand times more benefit by performing it there in the Holy Dam. Then the stages that Nami Saranya say, Purushottam must fulfills all of one's desires. One who worships Radha and Krishna in Purushottamath will attain everything. One who observes Purushottamath will burn up the reaction of all his bad karma and attain the direct service of Radha Krishna. During this month is the best of all months because of the spiritual advancement and Krishna overlooks all of one's offenses, overlooks. How to follow this month? There are many suggested vratas, and I will read what we have here. Keep celibacy for, for one month. Sleep on the floor, which is optional. That's, that's optional, sleeping on the floor. Bathe during sunrise. And if you can bathe in a holy place, or if you can bathe in a holy place three days during this month, it has great. Chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and meditate on Krishna's forms, qualities, and pastimes. Chant extra rounds. Chant 24, 32, or 64 rounds. So if you're doing 16, you can come up to 24. If you're doing more than 24, Go to 32 rounds. If you're doing more than 34, 32, then try to read 64 rounds every day. But the body should increase from 16 at least to 24. Daily offer a lamp to Radha and Krishna deities or pictures. 33 lamps daily or at least one a day in the month. Daily offer Arctic and perform Parikram around Tulsi Devi. Perform Parikram around the temple four times. So if you're living near a temple, circumambulate the temple, circulate Tulsi if you have it, circumambulate your, your uh, own temple if you have one in the house. Daily offer Radha Krishna deities, roses or pictures of roses, either roses or pictures. Offer lotus flowers or a hundred thousand Tulsi leaves or as many as you can. You can offer, so offering Roses, lotus flowers, and Tulsi leaves is recommended. Now here, this is what I recommend. Daily read Srimad Bhagavatam, especially Lord Brahma's prayers to Krishna, Canto 10, Chapter 14. 
and Bhagavad Gita chapter 15. So Bhagavad Gita is called Purushottam Yoga. So read that verse every day, read that chapter every day, at least the translations. And also Canto 10, chapter 14, which is Brahma's prayers to Krishna. That's really beautiful. So I highly recommend the devotees take on that as austerity. It's also recommended to daily chant Jag Sri Jagannastakam. Sri Chauraganya Guru Shastakam. Sri Nanda Nandanastakam. Jai Radha Madhava and other Radha Krishna bhajans and prayers. Uh, take a vow to remain peaceful and truthful throughout the month. Be careful not to blaspheme many devotees, brahmanas, saints, cows, shastras, or people who follow this yatra. Try your best to please Radha and Krishna by performing daily austerities according to your ability. It says, eat on leaf plates, sitting on the floor. No cutting of hair or nails. That's also optional. Eating on leaf plates, sitting on the floor is also optional. Uh, no cooking in oil or rubbing of oil on your body, no eating or rubbing of mustard oil. Uh, diets, there's recommended diets here. Uh, best to eat once a day after sunset or noon by following the following diets. One, only milk. Two, only fruits. No milk, no vegetables. Three, no grains, selected fruits, vegetables, fruits, milks, and then. No grains, selected vegetables, fruits, milk, nuts, and milk. Selected foods, all categories as per chapter Masya standard. So they give you four options. Only milk, uh, only fruit, no grain, uh, only vegetables, fruits, milk, and nuts, and all categories as per chapter Masya standards. Hari Bhakti Vilas says during Puru Shota Mas, once you remember Lord Krishna, and then donate 33 milk cakes cooked in ghee to Grihastha Brahmanas who are well versed in Shastra. Failing to do so, one loses all the piety he accumulated in the previous year. So, um, this donating of 33 milk cakes are done right at the end, the last day of Purushottam Mas. Recitation of the following mantra of Kondiya Muni is recommend Govardhan Dharma Vande, Gopalam Gopalupina, Gokula Sattva Ishanam, Govinda Gopika Priyam. 20th, daily offer 33 dandandavads to Bhagavan Sri Krishna or the Vaishnavas. Bhakti Vinodha, of course, says perform the Nirakshavrata, which means 30 days of concentrated one point worship and service to Radha Krishna by hearing, chanting, remembering their divine names, forms, qualities, pastimes. All day and night, hear about Bhagavan Sri Krishna, chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Take only Maha Purushadam. Breaking Purushottam Vat, this is the last day. Bathe in Brahma Muharta time. Worship Radha Shamsudra Didi or Pitcher. And pray, O Supreme Lord, O Sanantan, O Purushottam, O Hari. I offer my obeisances unto you. May you and your beloved Radhika please accept my offerings. I offer my repeated obeisances unto Shamsundra, who wears a fulgent yellow garments on his beautiful body. And this is the last day, offering Puspanjali and all obeisances to Radha Shamsundra's deity or picture. Number three, feed and give charity to three, five, seven, nine, eleven Brahmas to the best of your ability. And you can give them new clothes, two pairs of shoes, or money. 
But the best charity is to give a Srimad Bhagavatam to a qualified Grihastha Vaishnava Brahmana. This act will deliver all your ancestors to the spiritual world and award them the association of Lord Purushottam. Narada Muni says, Purushottam must is the best of all months, vratas and austerities. Just by faithfully hearing the glories of Purushottama, one attains Krishna Bhakti and immediately nullifies his sinful reactions. One who performs Purushottam Vrat to properly will attain unlimited Sukriti and go to the spiritual world. So what I read for what I read from I sent on the conference today. So everyone, anyone who, you can all check the conference and you'll see uh, one file called Purushottam Ma. Uh, this is what I read from. So these are some of the uh, glories and some of the austerities that one should perform. Perform whatever you can, but the things that are recommended highly uh, is uh, reduce eating. Uh, reduce sleeping, um, chant extra rounds, and specifically read those two chapters, uh, chapter 15 of Bhagavad Gita, chapter 14 of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. These are most recommended like that. And follow the best you can, whatever other recommendations are, are given here. Because you are engaged in devotional service, if you don't perform all of the recommended ratas for Purushottamas, you are still get the benefits of the month because you're engaged in devotional service. If you're not engaged in devotional service, and then you must perform many of these activities in order to get the benefit of this month. And those who fail to follow it also will find it difficult to perform any other activities this month. Okay. So this is um, a little bit about Purushan Math. Um, what I do is I read the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day and I read one verse and one purport and then I read the rest of the verses so each day I'll take starting with verse one I'll read the verse and purport and then read all the other verses and then um the next day I read verse two and then read all the verses starting with verse one. I'll read verse two and put on verse two like that. And for chapter um, ten, uh, 14 of Srimad Bhagavatam, then you can read that every day. That's nice. Okay, so this is some of the glories of Purushottam Mas. Uh, the Chatur Masya, the four months of the rainy season, which we are in the midst of, are suspended now. We were in the third month, which is the month that we fast from milk. So that's suspended. And that again begins uh, at the end of Purushottam Mas. And then Kartik will come very late this year. It will come in November. So like that. So if there's any comments or questions, we can take them. Tomorrow I'll tell the story related to the, the, the pastime related to Purushottam Mas. It's really amazing pastime. And you'll understand why you can understand the glories of this month 
after hearing this particular pastime. So take advantage. Um, these special months that are given to us are opportunities for great spiritual blessings, spiritual advancement. So um, if you need more information, speak to the local devotees in the temples nearby you to get more information on how best to perform this. I give you my recommendation, what I suggest is uh, reducing eating. If you can eat once a day, that's the best, one meal a day. Um, and the other point is extra rounds are, are definitely uh, needed in this month. So chant extra rounds. If you're chanting 16, try to reach 24. If you can chant more than 24, that's good. Try to go to 32 rounds if you can. Okay, so these are some of the benefit, uh, some of the austerities. We read some of the benefits. It benefits everyone and it raises one. If one follows the month very strictly according to all the regulations, one will go guaranteed to go back home back to God at the end of his life. Okay, so um, we'll open it up for comments or questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, we exactly. got Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj, for sharing such important and critical information. Uh, Maharaj, I have just one question. Like, uh, like why like there is only uh, Canto 10, Chapter 14? Like, what's the significance? Like, there are so many other prayers. Uh, to yeah, Krishna. this is Brahmins. This is Brahma's prayers to Lord Krishna. These are the mo one of the most powerful prayers in the whole Bhagavatam. Right after Brahma uh, tried to steal Krishna's calves and cowherd boys, and Krishna frustrated him and showed him the spiritual world, um, Brahma offered these beautiful prayers. These prayers are really deep. There's at least four significant verses in those prayers that are quoted throughout classes by Srila Prabhupada and by senior devotees, especially 14.8 uh, is quoted quite often. It's one of the most important verses in the entire Bhagavatam. And there's, a, there's three other verses there that are also uh, very significant. Once you read that chapter, you will understand the answer to your question. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. Is it all right to ask a question about unmotivated devotional service, please? Yeah. So um, we are encouraged to keep that goal of uninterrupted, unmotivated devotional service but I'm not, if uninterrupted, I can understand, but it's very difficult for me to grasp 
the concept of unmotivated devotional service because how does one keep on serving with no expectations whatsoever that's just uh, my brain cannot understand that concept um, that we should not expect any reciprocation or anything at all and just keep serving the lord there is uh, rupa goswami gives the verse Ayavila Sita Sunya Gyana Kamarana Vritam Anukulena Krishna Sila Nam Bhakti Uttama. This is from the introduction of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindha. Uh, I'll find the verse so I can give you the exact translation. It's an easy verse. It should be easy to locate this verse when we find it. Maybe someone can put the verse up. Aya bila sita sunya jnana karma anavita manakulena krishna silanam bhakti utama rupa goswami's verse from bhakti rasamar to sindha 1111 is the can I, is the reference anybody can put it up Aya bila Ayavila Sita Sunya. So everyone can see it. Put it on the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's from March in the City. She found it in Madhya Lila chapter 19. Okay, let's see the translation also. Okay, here we go. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. Now that's the translation. So, yeah, that's mentioned in Madhya Lila chapter 19. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord favorably without desire for material profit, so, or gain through fruit of activities or philosophical speculation. It's, it's meant to be for Krishna with a desire to please Krishna. That's the rest of the verse. And that is called pure devotional service. So when we offer the word, we should try to please Krishna by consciously offering the service to Krishna. And so that that is the essence of the practice. The fruit of activities are karma kanda and uh, philosophical speculations on the absolute truth fall into the category of jnana kanda. So without these two, what we say, mixed forms of activities, one should serve the Lord for the pleasure of the Lord. So what is the question of motivation? Well, I, was, uh, I do understand that we are not looking for anything material, but can we expect reciprocation from Krishna? Uh, well, Krishna is very merciful, but he's not obliged. But, Bhaktiyamam Mavajananti, Yavan Yas Yat Patat Pataha. Only by devotional service is Krishna pleased. So when our offerings are free from any motivation, then Krishna is pleased. When Krishna is pleased, you'll be pleased. Mm -hmm. 
if you're not ple feeling pleased in your devotional service, that means you're not pleasing Krishna. Mm. That's that's I think where the where the solution is. The motivation has to be pleasing Krishna, and that's the that's that's the aim. That's the aim. If it's offered with devotion, that's pleasing to Krishna. You find a you find a nice flower, and you say, "My dear Radharani, here this is a nice flower for you. Please take it and then give it to." Krishna. If you do that with a pure mind, then that's that's very pleasing. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, offer me a leaf, a flower, a fruit, and water with devotion, I will accept. <laughs> so serve with the idea of pleasing. <laughs> But if you dedicated your life to devotional service, then your activities are performed in that mood of pleasing Krishna. You may not always consciously be thinking of pleasing Krishna, but if you have surrendered to the process of devotional service and you're serving 24 hours a day, in other words, that's all you do, then uh, your activities are pleasing to Krishna. It's what it's when we try to get some material or fruit of gain from it that it becomes uh, something else. It's like trying to mix in a little sand in the sweet rice. Fruit of gain is look we're looking for some results. <clears throat> either extended or immediate results. This is the difficult part, not expecting results or not attack. I mean, doing it in a spirit of complete detachment from the results. That's uh, very difficult for me. Because well, well, you have to understand it. So just try to serve Krishna. So do your best to serve in the nicest way. You, the happiness you get is the opportunity for service. If you're not feeling happy by serving, then you're going to look for results. But the devotee is happy just to serve. The service itself is pleasing. So why do we need to worry about any kind of results? We're finding satisfaction and simply in the process of service. Just serve Krishna, that's all. You serve, you, you serve people you like, your husband, your wife, your children, somebody that you know, you like to serve them. They become happy when you do something for them. Just do something for Krishna, that's all. Do everything for Krishna and then it becomes natural. And everything you do becomes devotional service. Okay. And it's easily done when you follow the instructions of the spiritual master. Uh, uninterrupted is, it seems to be harder than un unmotivated. Um, unmotivated is easy. Uninterrupted is uh, that there are opportunities to get interrupted all all the time by the mind, by circumstances around you, by other people around you. So uninterrupted seems to be more of a hill to climb over than unmotivated. Be just be motivated by service. Service is so nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I'll try. Thank you so much. Just stay engaged all the time and you don't have any problem. 
if you say it's easy to be uninterrupted, then if it's easy to be uninterrupted, then it's easy to be unmotivated. Because unmotivation leads to uninterruption, not the other way around. Well, for me, actually, the other way is difficult because my mind is always thinking about this service, that service, that service. So that way, there is no problem. But uh, I feel, why am I not getting results? Why aren't the people I'm uh, talking to, taking up chanting? Why don't they read the books I give them? Why don't they... I mean, I'm feeling that there is no effect of what I'm doing because I don't see any result. You're attached to the results, that's why. You're attached to the service, that's all. So we should just keep serving and not worry so much what, uh, what is the result. Yeah, the results is not up to you. But still, you should do it in the best possible way. Not that because you're not concerned about the results, you just do it any old way. No, you do it in the nicest way possible. Using your intelligence, using your uh, uh, resources, you, whatever you have at your disposal, you can use in devotional service. Time, energy, resources, words, intelligence. I don't know what's so hard to understand. It's quite easy, simple. Maybe you're, you're attached to the results and because you're attached to the results, you're not, you see the results as, as the, as the uh, goal. Just see the service as the goal rather than the results as the goal. In regard so regardless to of how people are, um, you know, reacting to it or receiving it or even doing anything with it, we just go on trying to distribute the knowledge, distribute the book, distribute prasadam, give the holy name, and then the results is in Krishna's hands. We just do our service as nicely as possible. And what happens? We, that we is want, yeah, we, we want them to take it, but it's. A, it's not up to us whether they take it or not. We just try our best. Try your best. <laughs> That's bhakti, to try your best to serve. <laughs> but it's so frustrating when you say over and over and over again and try to help people and they just carry on with their same, you know, crazy ways. It's very... Uh, then, that's it. what you're doing is planting some seeds that will fructify later on in their life. So if we're expecting people to take everything we say immediately, then, um, you know, even that didn't probably even that didn't even happen with Srila Prabhupada. It's very rare someone takes up devotional service. And rarer yet, once they take it up, they actually uh, complete it. You know? Bhakti Siddhanta used to say, preach, and if no one comes, preach to the four walls. Because he said, our business is to preach, that's all. Even if no one comes, preach anyway, because that's our service. Uh, I remember I went to one jail program. They had organized a jail program. And when I got there, nobody came. And so I preached to the person who organized it. <laughs> and that was good. So we just go on, you know, in our own small, humble way, trying to do the best we can. And then Krishna is just pleased whether people show up for the program or they uh, take the philosophy or whatever it is. Do you, think Chris, do you think Krishna needs our service? you think Krishna needs the results? 
I mean, he can make the whole world Krishna conscious just by by his desire. It doesn't it's not hard for him to do that. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't work that way. He gives people their independence. He wants to see how much you actually want to serve him. That's what he's interested in. Are you, uh, do you want to serve him or do you want to serve him? You want to serve yourself by serving him. Most people come to spiritual life or religious life so they can increase their material profit, benefit. Prabhupada used to say, you know, people pray, give me our daily bread, give me my daily bread. So they approach God and God for something material. We say no. Uh, we don't say give us our daily bread. We say, Krishna, what do you want to eat today? Just try to serve Krishna, that's all. You're just trying to connect with him in devotion. That's all you can do. The results are up to him. <laughs> he can empower you to, to you know, purify thousands of people or nobody. <laughs> In either case, just serve. Do your best to serve. That's all. Of course, there's spiritual anxiety. That's, that's also nice that I want to serve more. I want to serve better. That's also good. But when it comes right down to it, you can't make the results happen. Results are not within your power. All right, Guru Maharaj, meditate on all the things that you have said. Thank you so I much. I feel like I've been talking, you know, like I've been preaching to you for years and you still can't get it. You think I stopped preaching to you? No, because I get a benefit by preaching to you. Sorry, Even I'm if you so can't sorry. get it. You can't get it. I've been I've been trying to tell you things for years and you still can't get it. But I'm having I don't give up because you know, once in a while you get it. <laughs> oh Krishna. Sorry for being so dense, so, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for not giving up. Yeah, if I give up then I give up my service. So I, I still try. But of course I keep changing my my tactics so you will find some, you'll see some way that what i'm saying is what you need to hear <laughs> so i I'm keep really thinking of different for, i'm truly sorry for being such a donkey please help me well i'm just using you as an example you know you're, you're preaching to other people and they're not listening and i'm preaching to you and you're not listening so what's the difference Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Maybe, maybe if you start listening to me, then you'll st people will start listening to you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I don't know what to say, Guru Mara. Well, you asked for it. Okay. Oh my gosh, I don't know where to show my face now. I have many, many persons like that. They still can't get it. <laughs> but it's because of material attachments. That's why they can't get it. And the same reason why people can't take but you are giving is because of material attachments. And material attachments are, they run deep because they've been with us for many lifetimes. But because you're sincere, you'll get it someday. Thank you, Krishna. I'm so happy to hear that part. Thank you, Guru Mara. There's some hope now. Yeah, that's 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 the hope. Because you're sincere, I haven't given up. I give up on those who are not sincere. <laughs> Uh, 
you have to be sincere. And the more you're sincere, the, the easier it is to understand how everything works. Sincere means I want to, when I get the instructions, I follow. That's all. So do your best to preach Krishna consciousness and depend on Krishna. That's all. Okay, Guru Maharaj, today evening we're going to have an outdoor event with Harinam and Prasadam distribution and book sale. And I'm going to try and meditate that I must just try to do the service as nicely as possible and not worry about who's taking it, who's coming, who's participating and all that anxiety. Just give up all that and just, just do the service sincerely. If people see that you're trying to change them, they sometimes resist that. If people see you're trying to just give them something, then they become more open. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. That's a key point. Don't try to trade change anybody, just try to present Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Really appreciate all the points you've made. It's very, very, very helpful for me. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Anantacharya Das here. Hare Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Please accept my obeisances. <coughs> Excuse me about my voice. Um, Maharaj, sometimes we find that we try to do big things, a lot of big things. And again, you know, connected to what uh, Mother Sri Devi said that, you know, like, okay, we should be attached and we should depend on Krishna. But sometimes we try to do big things. And the result is sometimes in our preaching is like, sometimes has little impact. Uh, I know we're not always shooting for the stars and it all, it's not all about big impact. Whether it's a preaching or programs or our own, uh, you know, personal endeavors to please Srila Prabhupada, is it perhaps a better mood and a more balanced mood to take small steps that perhaps can make a bigger impact long term? No, you have to see your audience and see what you can do. Prabhupada always uh, said, you know, try to um, go for something big in a general sense. But when you're working with people, you have to see how receptive people are to whatever you're trying to give them. And as you work with people, you start to learn the audience and how to present either the knowledge or um, just the process itself. So it's more or less a little bit evaluating the situation beforehand, at least to some degree, you can't see the whole thing until you actually start working. So to make that comparison, I don't think would really be helpful. Mm -hmm. Well, I should take small steps instead of the big steps or I should go for just go for the big steps and see what happens. Now you have to judge the situation. Thank you, Mark. Good Mark, I have one more I thought big in terms of how he presented Krishna Kinsu. Is that help? Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so, Maharaj. I had one more question if there's time. It's just a quick one. So, um, 
Oh, yeah. like, we're in Purushottam month and we want to try and maximize. And like some of myself right now has had surgery, you know, um, I want to kind of try and maximize, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried that, you know, I'll, I'll make a promise to Krishna and I won't be able to fulfill it. Like, like maybe I'll make oh, a see vow. You can, see, see what you can do nicely. I gave a few recommendations about increased round. Yes. Minimizing eating, uh, minimizing, reducing eating and sleeping and See what you can do. Look at the, uh, the different options or the different forms of uh, worships that are recommended for this month. Then accept what you think you can do nicely, regularly. It's not like you have to do everything. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, it's 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 uh I'm getting there. It's been a it's been a difficult month, a bit more difficult than I thought it would be. But I'll write to you and give you an update just so you know what's happening. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. My obeisances. My obeisances to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and to your pure Lord of Speed. Radha um, Bhakti says, so nice. I'm sorry, this this is Govardhan Hila. Um, I, I, you know, forgive my ignorance about this particular month. You know, all these years I've been working. Yeah. And I did not know that this was considered the most auspicious month of uh, the year. What it makes it? It doesn't come up every year. It comes up every 27 months. Okay. And, but, but why? Oh, is that why it's more auspicious? Yeah, the reason why it comes up every 27 months is because it aligns the lunar and solar calendars. Uh, for, for 27 months, the lunar calendar is always shorter. The lunar calendar is always shorter than the solar calendar. So the makeup that the time after 27 months, another month is placed in there and that's Buddha Shotan month. But the month also has its history in a particular pastime, and we'll we'll discuss that pastime tomorrow. Okay, Guru Maharaj, because I was working all these years and I wasn't at the temple. I had no idea that this was even more important than the month of Kartik. I had no idea. So well, Kartik, forgive my Kartik, ignorance. Kartik comes up every year. That's why. But Purushottama doesn't come up. It comes up every twenty-seven months. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Sorry, Krishna. So the last time it came up was um, was in uh, May, June of 2018. During the month June, of May and June? Yeah, it was May, June 2018. I remember that clearly. So it has not, it's not going to come up at the same time every time that it comes around. 27 months. 27. So the next one should be uh, 2023, right around January, around that time. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Mm. Uh, uh, 
Uh, did you get my photos I sent you? Sorry, my phone was muted there. Um, I was looking, I received a message from you, but I didn't get, I mean, an email, but I haven't received photos yet. Unless they came this morning, I'll look again. The photos are in the attachment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will look again. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, read, uh, I read your email, but about the, um, about, you know, you had a verse, the purport in there. About chanting. Is it in yeah, that, that particular in, one? Oh, that was in, there's another one. Oh, okay. I didn't see it yet. I'll look today again. Hare Krishna. Anyone else would like to speak something? <laughs> okay, we can conclude, conclude here and we'll see everyone tomorrow. So read about Purushottam Master, so you can go online and find a lot of information. And check the conference for what I posted today. Uh, and uh, try to follow some of the basic things we discussed. And uh, you'll find that there will be much spiritual blessings. <laughs> Okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Thank you, Guru Maharaj Hare Krishna. Hari Bol, Archana City. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very, very much. Sorry for the uh, blasting. <laughs> No, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Please give me more. Someday then I will get it. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Bhav. Manjuali. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much. Anybody might be. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much. Hello, Susanna. Mm -hmm. Thank Hare you. Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs>